of these little rubber rubber things. I don't know how much I trust that though, because I, I just don't want it to move at all. Double sided tape? Yeah. It was yeah, it probably will be, huh? Okay. <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> you got in trouble. No, everybody did. <laughs> oh. We all got in trouble. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So um, I'm going to square that up later, but not now, obviously, because it's holding its place, right? It's got our, and we decided that we were going to move this up slightly, right? So I just moved it up a little bit. So there was, there was more of a nub, now there's less of a nub at the top. Okay, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just call that. Okay, when, when hanging hammers, um, I want, the, so, so the best way to do it is to, is to ensure that the hammers are against the straight edges. There, there are actually several straight edges that we're using. The bottom surface of this is a straight edge. This aluminum piece that's fastened here, that's a straight edge. And then this is a straight edge here. Just make sure that the hammers are um, are under no tension in any in any dimension, and this is why I actually really like the um, the looser fit because it helps with um, ensuring that that it's under no tension. Because what what you can have is if it is under tension, even a slight bit of tension, is the straight edge is pushing on that hammer. And then, and it looks good when it's on the jig. Everything's in perfect alignment because if it looks good, it sounds good. Everything's in perfect alignment, but it's under slight tension, even a little bit. And so, what, as soon as you remove the jig, now you have one that kind of pops out. So, um, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a balancing act between using using that um, that jig as close to possible, as, as close as you can to getting getting the parts that are supposed to be against the straight edge, against the straight edge, but not so close that they're actually bearing on it, right? Because if it's bearing on it, that means it's putting tension on it and it'll kind of pop out. And I mean, this is, it's, this is like, anyway, you'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of find that spot there and then I'll set this straight edge. Sure that it's aligned with the string? Can you just make sure that it's Aligned with the strings? Yeah. Well, how do you know that it's in a, a, aligned with the strings? Ha, uh, in what dimension? The Is it like the strings are straight up and down? Yeah. Oh. Like when it strikes. It oh, I see what you're saying. On the center of the string. Um, it should just, just yeah, we're just assuming that, that these are, it should be designed, it should be engineered such that if that hammer is straight 90 degrees, it's poised like exactly underneath the, the strings. We're going to make that assumption. If we have to make adjustments later, we can do that. Um, whether that's, so you just have to make sure that they're vertical. You know, and there are a few ways that you can make the make the adjustment. One way is you can move the strings. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, that's what I would do. If if this was if all of these if if I finished hanging these hammers, all of the hammers are ninety degrees. And, and you know perfectly square of course if they're all 90 degrees they're going to be perfectly parallel to each other and they're all evenly spaced and the traveling is done right the traveling is done because traveling is what is what makes it go what makes that flange go straight up and down and if it's improperly traveled it'll come off to one side or the other right so if it's if if they're all square travel then and, and even, evenly spaced, then the problem is the strings. So you can, you can just use a screwdriver and just kind of pop them back and forth so that the strings are aligned to the hammers. Okay.
I'm going to bring that bring this jig up to the fattest point of the hammer here. Looks like that side's about there. And there again, I don't want to be pushing on pushing on the hammer. I think I'm at the strategy. And you can see, by the way, if, if you look closely, maybe get, get a camera shot of this, that this hammer isn't, um, the, the, the angle of this hammer isn't totally square. This way? Yeah, come, come look this way. You can see the way it intersects or the way it touches the jig there. It touches the right side of the jig sooner, meaning it's angled like the whole hammer is kind of angled that way. But I think that's, a, that's probably the fault of just how it happens to be held on by the tape. So we're not going to worry about that right now because all we're worried about is that that is our placeholder for the, what we determine by our ears as the best strike point. So we'll fix that later when we actually glue that hammer on. Okay, what I'm feeling here is I'm feeling, it's, it's hard to describe, but it feels like a little bit of stickiness as I bring this up and down, which tells me that the, that the back edge, let's see, I guess it's like that, the back edge of this hammer is kind of, is kind of brushing on in the corner, which means I have it a little bit too tight. So um, that's an important thing to, to watch out for, just to kind of feel it, to determine, okay, am I too tight? Because you really want to avoid that. And you can hear there, it's, it's hitting the, the bottom there, not the aluminum. And then as I move it forward, you can hear where it transitions to hitting the side of the aluminum. Hear that? Okay, we don't want that. Okay, that's good. And then, um, and this gives us this straight edge here. And we're gonna make sure I didn't check. Yeah, that's tight. Okay, it's gonna just barely touch that. And then I'll tape it down. In that spot, I guess I should mark um, because this is at an angle right here. I'm just going to mark this is the center of the. Uh, pretty sure this can wipe away. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's the center of that hammer, the center of this hammer. Okay. I think the jig is set. Okay. Now we just tape it down. Oh, one other thing is, uh, can you hear me that screwdriver right there, Jake? It's going to work much better if we have these shanks well um, aligned. So I'll use, I'll use the uh, whipping cushion as kind of my main guide. I'm not, I won't get them perfect, but I mean, it, it just, it just helps when they're, when you're hanging hammers about where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yep. That's right. I 
and then I'll maybe I'll adjust some of these where we want it basically equidistant each shank. So I'll use the whip and cushion as my basic reference point, but then I might fudge it a little bit to favor equidistance between shanks. What's that? It's science and art. Oh, totally. Do you want to get a shot of this, Carmel? Um, angle? Yeah. Over Maybe a, yeah. an above shot so you can see like the how the shanks are getting there. Almost equidistant. That's probably good enough. Okay, you see the spaces between. Beautiful. Thank you. I'll dry fit that. So I want the, uh, it looks like, if, if you have a look, even when I have it turned, it looks like, it looks like the boring was maybe slightly favoring that, that angle. So I th there I'm good. You know, I've got my straight edge there on the aluminum, I've got my straight edge there on the on the white plastic, but it seems to be kind of favoring um, the hammer is kind of twisting that direction a little bit too much. So maybe I'll um, maybe I'll ream it a little bit. Want to put a collar on there? Maybe a little more for a collar on this. It's pretty wide. dimensions.
Okay, so I'm checking for making sure it's not under any kind of tension. Checking to make sure that it's touching the straight edge equally on both sides. Straight up and down. Okay, looks good. The easiest adjustment to make at the end is this adjustment. That's very simple, right, with just the flame. Other things are kind of set in stone unless you pop it off. Okay, and you just repeat that lots of times. Um, try and get that collar. I don't like my collars very much. What is it? The collar, there's, there's supposed to be like a, it's, you know, if you if you if you're wearing a turtleneck and you like you like roll it down and you have like this like it, that's what that's kind of what it looks like. Oh, okay. That's that's what you want. Not like my collars. My collars kind of stink. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I do need a little more. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is. So. Easier with an upright. And then these are going to be, these are going to be uh, kind of carved, shaved at the end, sanded. Okay. Or another one is the socks, you know? Like, it seems like, in the, was it in the 80s that yeah. tennis players would do that? They would roll, the, roll them up, Lewis or does every day. pull them up and then roll them yeah, down. I was thinking about and like a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tennis players and our seven-year-old. That's right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay. All right, there you have it. Thanks, Brandon. Okay, you're welcome.